Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, welcome to St. Thecla Church. My name is Ed Burge, your lector. Our presider for today's Mass is Father Kevin Rowland, assisted by Deacon Tim Maxwell. Our cantor for today's Mass is Mike Reed. Please take a moment to silence your phones. As we begin to celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday, we invite you to please stand. Join in our opening hymn, number 523 in the Gather Book, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, number 523. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. We continue to celebrate the one Easter day. We continue to give thanks and praise to God for the new life, salvation, redemption that we have in Jesus, and his passion, his death, his resurrection. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, risen Son of God, you bring pardon and peace to all who put their trust in you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, beloved one, your mercy endures forever. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, you are the source of healing for all who have turned away from you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
us pray. <clears throat> God of everlasting mercy, when the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We invite our children forward, the children's liturgy of the word. God's blessing, His Holy Spirit upon you, that might receive the joy and happiness of God's holy word. We make these prayers in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Proclamation of Psalm 118 responses, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by blood, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put his finger in the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. Lord.
Saint Faustina was a nun who lived in Poland in the 1900s. She joined a religious community and Jesus himself appeared to her several times. He came and said, I want you to share a message with the world. He said, I want you to share a message with the world that I want to give everyone in the whole world my forgiveness, my peace, my eternal life. That I shed my blood on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. That I am love and mercy itself. He appeared to her in an image, such as you can see to my left, there's an image of Jesus there. That is how he appeared to St. Faustina. He asked that this image be made and that this devotion, that his mercy be spread to the whole world. That he shed his blood on the cross so that we could receive forgiveness, peace, eternal life. He wanted to share that my precious blood poured out. My love is greater than your sins. My precious blood is greater than your sins. I am rich in mercy and compassion. No matter what sin you commit, when you come to me in humility, when you ask for mercy in my name, I will grant you that. I will grant you mercy. I'll grant you forgiveness. I'll grant you peace. I'll grant you eternal life. He said, now is the time for mercy. Before I come as a just judge, I am your merciful Savior, who is rich in mercy. And this is this mercy and forgiveness I want to grant to you, to the whole world. This is the message of our faith. This is the message of the gospel. This is the message as well that we hear in our sacred scriptures this weekend. It's the same Jesus who appeared to his apostles. We hear that they're gathered in the upper room, that they are afraid. He says, peace be with you. He then shows him his hands and his side, his hands and his sides that were wounded. He shows him his wounds. He points to them after says, peace be with you. He's telling them from my sacred wounds. This is where in the precious blood within them, this is where you find peace. Then continues and says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. Those whose sins you forgive are forgiven. Those whose sins you retain are retained. Recall we had our preaching series on the Sacrament of Confession. This is the main scriptural text for the basis for the Sacrament of Confession. The apostles were the first priests. Jesus gives them power to forgive sins in his name. Jesus forgiving sins, but through them. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, by Jesus' precious blood, by his passion, by his death, by his resurrection. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we receive the forgiveness of our sins his peace. This is exactly in hearing the prayer of absolution in the sacrament of confession that the priest offers. Jesus says the words, but it's through the priest. The prayer of absolution, the priest says, Jesus says through the priest, God, the Father of mercies, through the death and resurrection of his Son, has reconciled the world to himself and poured out the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace and I absolve you from your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God telling us, I am rich in mercy and compassion. I desire that you come to me in all things, including with your weaknesses, your sins, your faults. I want my precious blood to come upon you, to grant you forgiveness, to grant you peace, to grant you eternal life. He wants us to come to him in humility, to come to him with confidence, confidence in his mercy, his love for us, than for us to give that peace and eternal life. He wants us to come to him with our sins, which we all have, sins which harm us, which keep us from the peace, the eternal life God wants to give us. The sins that we all have, myself definitely included, the times when we are selfish, when we're hard-hearted, when we say, I'm not going to serve, I'm not going to be generous. When we say unkind words, when we say words of slander, words of gossip, when we ourselves lack mercy, forgiveness, when we hold on to bitterness. But Jesus desires that we come to him, including with our sins, we ask for his mercy then we can receive that forgiveness, that peace, that eternal life. So we should be coming to him every day. Every day we should repent. Every day we should come and ask for forgiveness in his holy name. 
We bring our sins before him. We say an act of contrition. We ask for forgiveness. Then we should bring those sins regularly to the sacrament of confession. We believe we truly, Jesus' precious blood is poured upon us, and we truly receive that forgiveness, that peace. Graces he wants to give us. This God who is rich in mercy and compassion, that same that we also, we sang in our psalm today. We sang in our psalm today, the house of Israel, the house of Israel say his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say his mercy endures forever. This God who is rich in mercy and compassion and forgiveness. So later this week, let us take 10 to 15 minutes for prayer, for reflection. Let's read again in particular our psalm and our gospel. Then let us pray to Jesus, pray to God. Jesus, help me to know that you died on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins. To grant me forgiveness, peace, eternal life. Help me to come to you in humility, including with my sins. Help me to ask for forgiveness. Help me to bring to you daily in prayer. Help me, help me to bring them to the sacrament of confession. So I can fully receive that forgiveness, that peace, eternal life you want to give me. As we gather at this Eucharist to give thanks and praise to God, let us make these part of our prayers as well. Amen. I believe in one God. With confidence, we bring our petitions and needs before our loving and powerful God. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Alan Vigneron, all the bishops and the clergy, that their ministry of, in the service of our Lord may always proclaim his resurrection and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the church, that we may be bearers of God's mercy to all who need it most especially those who find themselves doubting God's presence in their lives or in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the world and an end to armed conflict and to gun violence, so that all God's children may enjoy the peace that Jesus offers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all those who struggle to believe in a merciful God in the face of evil and sin in the world, that Jesus' promise of his redemptive presence in a broken world may strengthen their faith and give them hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all newly initiated Christians who are baptized and confirmed at the Easter Vigil, that their faith may be strengthened in the community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
that we may emulate the early Christian community as described in today's first reading, sharing what we have so that no person goes needy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For greater devotion to the Eucharist, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all those suffering from disease or illness, and for those who treat them and care for them, that they may realize the Lord's healing touch. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who have or are about to pass from this life to life eternal, especially Bishop Thomas Gummelton, Deacon Ronald McIntyre, Gil Zanger, Michael Shamoon, Vivian and Lois Asher, Miles Resigu, and Jennifer and Ryan Ambrosio. May they attend the fullness of life within the endless Easter festival of the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. United in the Holy Spirit with those of Mary, Mother of God, our patroness, St. Thecla, and all the saints in light, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank for many blessings. We thank you for the mercy and forgiveness offered to us in Jesus. Help us to turn to you in mercy, receive the forgiveness, peace, and eternal life you want to give us. We make these prayers in confidence in the holy name of Jesus, your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join us in our offertory hymn, number 518 in the Gather Book. Alleluia, Christ is risen, number 518.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and those who you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world, by dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
wonderful, Lord. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you to so obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Thecla, Saint Anne, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice for reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Yes, Prep. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Have a blood drive here in our gymnasium this coming Thursday. Our annual pasta dinner will be Saturday, April 20th. As well, this will be, any proceeds will go to our Knights of Columbus. And this will be a special date, especially for our Knights of Columbus. Our local council here will be celebrating the 25th anniversary. The Knights are such a beautiful organization. There's good men that are part of our, our parish here that help in so many ways, have so many acts of service. So please come to this dinner for good fraternity as well as to support our Knights. As I shared earlier, so today we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday as well as which is given to us a plenary indulgence, which is freedom from temporal punishment due to sin. We come before God with no attachment to sin and as well as we receive the sacrament of confession within 20 days and receive him, we received him in the Eucharist. I share actually a little bit more about the image of divine mercy here as well. So Jesus appeared to St. Faustina. We see rays coming out of Jesus' heart, red and white, which symbolize the blood and water that flowed from his side. Red being his blood, water that flowed from his side, signifying as well the Eucharist and baptism. Again, so this from his precious side flowed blood and water through which we receive salvation, forgiveness, mercy that he wants to give us. And so you can read more about how to receive that indulgence as well as the different graces of indulgence that's in the bulletin article that I wrote today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he who by his redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have been already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. May bless and almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. in our closing hymn, number 574 in the Gather Book, Crown Him with Many Crowns, number 574.